For a few hours last week, it appeared Illinois lawmakers might have given up on passing a new congressional map until next year. But after some backroom wrangling, a final map was dropped in the late evening hours, and Democrats in the majority pushed it over the finish line close to midnight on Thursday. Well, that map is now headed to Governor Pritzker's desk, and Democrats did their very best to gerrymander Republicans from five seats down to three. It's already making waves across the state and across both parties. Now stuck in a district with powerhouse Latino Congressman Chuy Garcia, freshman rep Marie Newman announced Friday she's going to try her hand at challenging Sean Caston in the newly drawn 6th District. Newman surprised many with a statement on Friday saying in part, the lion's share of this new district is made up of the communities and residents I represent today, and I look forward to continuing to serve them in Congress. Well, for his part, Caston says he's staying the course. His own statement reads in part, I have never wanted to see friends run against friends. I believe the shared goal of every House member is to maintain and expand our House majority. I look forward to continuing to serve the people of the 6th District. Well, the new map also prompted a not-so-surprising announcement from Illinois Republicans. Republican Adam Kinzinger, he's not running for a seventh term in Congress, but he is running for something. I cannot focus on both a re-election to Congress and a broader fight nationwide. I want to make it clear, this isn't the end of my political future, but the beginning. Well, the new map would have placed Kinzinger in a district with fellow Republican Darren LaHood. Now, while Kinzinger has found national recognition for opposing former President Donald Trump, it was going to be an uphill battle in a primary race. I spoke with redistricting expert Frank Calabrese about the new map and more. Frank, thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, the mapping process uh, looks like it's wrapping up for the fourth time. Let me ask you, the biggest surprise for Democrats is that uh, progressive Democrat Marie Newman, who was uh, in map number three, is pitted against her colleague, Sean Caston. Uh, then that changes, and now she gets pitted against Chewy Garcia. Uh, uh, but of course, you don't have to live in the district that you live in. You can run anywhere in the state in Illinois. So um, there is a new announcement from Marie Newman. She's going to take on Caston anyway. It looks like she's also angry that Caston seemed to have lobbied Springfield and more successfully maybe than she did. Yeah, a lot of politics at play right now. So this new district, um, the sixth district, which is um, number for Sean Caston, it's actually 40% of Marie Newman's former district and only 25% of Sean Caston's former district. So Marie Newman does have a geographic advantage, but Marie Newman also, she's kind of branded herself as a very um, progressive squad type uh, liberal, where Sean Caston's more of a traditional uh, liberal congressman. And this district, you know, would consist of Mount Greenwood, Oak Lawn, Orland Park, um, Burr Ridge. That's not a very liberal progressive area. It's more of a moderate area. And so when it comes to ideology, I think Sean Kasten might have a slight advantage um, for a more moderate liberal message to, uh, compared to Marie Newman's more progressive squad message. But clearly not as much of, a, of an advantage as Chewy Garcia would have had, even given the fact that they're both progressives on the progressive caucus leadership serving on transportation committee. But that district looks like it's made for Chewy Garcia. Right. That's almost 70 percent Latino. Um, Chewy Garcia, he's probably universally known, you know, from his run for mayor and his runs for Congress. So um, Marie Newman, I think she had no choice but to run against Sean Cast. And she would she would likely not have a chance against uh, Chewy Garcia. So in the creation of this new third district, which uh, is should allow for Latino representation, you can't you can't. Uh, district for Latinos, right? We have to be careful about, about that. But that being said, Senator Don Harmon of the Senate said uh, it's not so much a Latino district as it is a Latino opportunity or influence district. What does that mean? Well, um, President Harmon is absolutely correct. It is a 47% Latino district. Compare that to Chuy Garcia's district, it's almost 70% Latino. So it's not automatically a Latino candidate's going to win, but it's an opportunity district and they'll, they'll fare very well in Democratic primary. So Republicans, of course, not happy, but they weren't going to be no matter what happened here because they don't control the process. And so we now have a, a map that created, that did create Adam Kinzinger going against Darren LaHood. Adam Kinzinger, perhaps surprising a lot of people Friday when he said, I'm not running for re-election. Based on the way that district looks, does LaHood face competition or is it his now? It's his. So if, because um, of Kinzinger, what he announced, um, LaHood is not gonna have any competition. 
you know, LaHood, that's a very big name in central Illinois. His father was congressman from the Peoria area. I think Darren LaHood is going to return to Congress. And of course, whose father served in the Obama administration, by the way. <laughs> and, and then we have Mary Miller. She is probably the staunchest of the Trump supporters, uh, very vocal uh, in her district. And at first, she was going to be against an earlier map. She was going to be running against LaHood. Now it appears she's running against Mike Boss. She also lives about a mile and a half out of uh, Rodney Davis's district, but they seem to shore up things for him, maybe to keep him from running for governor. That's just some supposition there. What is your sense of what happens to Miller and who she runs for and how Trump uh, supporting is her part of the woods? Well, you're absolutely correct. Uh, Springfield Democrats do not want Rodney Davis running statewide. They made a district that only he's in. They gave him Mary Miller's district, but Mary Miller, she's gonna have to make a decision whether she's gonna run against Rodney Davis or um, Mike Boast. And again, her house was, was very clearly gerrymandered to go into the Southern Illinois district of Mike Boast. <laughs> and, and as you look at that district, I know you follow the politics. I mean, Boast is obviously a uh, you know, very conservative, but is there an edge in that district now? I would think the, uh, the, the Democrats would prefer Boast over Miller. Correct, and that district has much, much more of Mike Boast's district. Mike Boast is from um, kind of the southern south of the Metro East area. And that district is the southern kind of like 20% of the state and where Mary Miller's district was much more focused in central Illinois. So when it comes to a population geographic advantage, definitely Mike Post has the advantage there. But Mary Miller, you know, she does have a very pro-Trump kind of angle to her. So, you know, I think she could do well in that district um, from her, from her uh, ideology. So President Harmon also said last night when the maps came out, there's always going to be disappointment. He knows there's unhappy people. There's no way to do this process right. But you are a maps expert in terms of the drawing. So let me ask you, uh, is this a map that in the end people should be happy with? Was there a better way to do this, either for Democrats who controlled the process uh, or to hurt Republicans more, which might have been their goal? Well, I, I think this map does do very well for Democrats. It's going to send probably 14 Democrats to Congress, 14 out of 17, which is which is very high. That's like 80 like percent. And also, you have to give the Democrats credit for creating a new minority district, a new open seat. You know, that was hard. They had to place Marie Newman and Sean Caston in the same district, and they had to place Marie Newman and Shui Garcia in the same district. So, you know, they, they got a lot of grief for that. But, you know, they did have, I think, an honorable goal of creating a new opportunity district for Latinos. You know, Latinos now are almost 20 percent of the state population, that they're the largest minority group. And so the, the Democrats in Springfield, they were reacting to, you know, this new demographic uh, shift in the state. Obviously, a lot, of, a lot of emotions go with this process, and I'm sure that's still to play out. We'll see how it all goes. Frank Calabrese, thanks so much for your insight on the maps. We'll probably talk to you again as this uh, situation develops further. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. <laughs> and coming up next on WGN TV Political Report. I think we have an historic, I know we have a historic economic framework. It's a framework that will create millions of jobs, grow the economy, invest in our nation and our people. It's one step forward, two steps back on Capitol Hill. The latest debate over President Biden's Build Back Better agenda is next.